Welcome to Main Street Living. The Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod invites you to join us in worshiping our Lord. Reverend Daniel Tews brings us today's message, Shining the Light on the Grave. Reverend Tews will lead us in worship after our opening hymn. Alleluia, Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now confess our sins before the Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson for this Easter Sunday is from Isaiah chapter 25, beginning with verse 6. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. 
he will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 1. I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance that I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preached, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this Easter Sunday is according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in white robes, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now let us take this time to confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the text for my message today is the resurrection account from our gospel text that comes from Mark chapter 16. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, Jesus had done it. He defeated death. He rose from the grave. As the scriptures tell us, the last enemy had already been defeated. Yet the women didn't know it. Not yet. I'd like for you to look for a moment at this medieval painting. It's titled The Resurrection by Fra Angelico, and it resides now in the San Marco Museum in Florence, Italy. Now you can see the faithful women that we heard about in our gospel lesson there on the right. See where they're looking. See them looking into the tomb. Now I'd like you to pay special attention and notice what they are carrying in their hands. See the love that they had for this Jesus. They had gone out the night before and purchased the spices and these these ointments to anoint his body. Then they woke up very early in the morning. They hurried to the tomb. They loved him. And their last measure of care that they could do was to ensure that his earthly remains were well taken care of. But now imagine their disappointment. They had hoped that this Jesus was different, that he wasn't like all the rest. You remember the words of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus? They said, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. After all, they knew that this Jesus was something different. They knew that God was present where Jesus was. Now, it certainly was not the way that they expected God to act, but in Jesus, they met something that they had never met before. Jesus had cared for that wreck of a woman, Mary Magdalene, when everybody else had simply written her off as just another sinful woman. What about the other women there? Mary, the mother of James, Salome, what was their story? Why did they love this Jesus so? Now, this Jesus had done so much that it might not be just the same old story. Jesus had come into the world, and he brought light into the darkness. He made the women precious with his love. Sin and guilt gave way as Jesus accepted, loved, and forgave them. Amid all the powers of darkness in this world, Jesus had walked with Well, a breathtaking freedom, a complete lack of fear. Jesus showed what it meant to be truly alive, to live as a human being in the world that God created, unchained, unstained, not scared. Jesus had looked his accusers in the eye, and none of them could enslave him. They could do nothing apart from his will. Jesus stood up to the powers of the world. But then in the end, they got him. His end was the same as our end, the finality of the grave. And now their hope was gone. All that had been given to the women by this Jesus was gone. And so they came to the grave to weep out their grief. They came to the tomb to do one last measure of love for their Lord. But ultimately ultimately it is a love for his body. They believe that Jesus is dead. I'd like you to look again at the painting. The women are looking down, see the place where he was placed, but he is not here. Now, these are the words of the angel, uh, the young man clothed in white, as it says in the scriptures. You can see him there seated on the left. Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified, has risen. He is not here. You can see the angel pointing. The women are looking in the wrong direction. So the angel tells them, go and tell the disciples, and especially Peter, that Jesus goes before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Now what do the women do? Well, they respond immediately, uh, breaking into the hymn we just heard, right? Jesus Christ is risen today. Sing we to our God above. Alleluia. Praise eternal as his love. Alleluia. Praise him, all ye heavenly hosts. Alleluia. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia. Then they go home and have the, put on the, the Easter ham, open the best bottle of wine, and have a huge celebration, right? Well, no. The scriptures tell us that they fled from the tomb, that they were full of fear and trembling, and they said nothing to anyone about the resurrection. See, these women came to anoint a body. They believe that Jesus is still dead. If you remember from the picture, they are looking into the tomb. But then they are forced by an angel to realize that Jesus is alive, and the response is fear. Now, why fear? Because they realize that three days earlier, on Good Friday, we killed God. That this Jesus of Nazareth actually was who he said he was. That he really was something different. That it wasn't the same old story after all. 
The light had come into the world, and the world rejected him. He came bringing a message of life, eternal life, forgiveness, and sacrificial love, freedom from the slavery of sin, death, and the power of the devil. And the women now knew the truth. They finally got it. And then they realized to their ultimate horror that God had truly come into the world and that we had killed God. So now they fled in horror. Now the Gospel of Mark stops right here. And I believe that we are left in the same position of the women. Uh, we in the church have been going through the story of Jesus uh, through the Gospel of Mark for several weeks now. We have seen how Jesus was faithful. Now, if Jesus says something's going to happen, it happens. How Jesus speaks a word and people are healed. He speaks and even the demons obey him. How he says a life-giving word and the dead rise. And now you too are faced with the empty tomb. Maybe you can picture yourself standing there with the women. Perhaps you too come to this place with a deep love for Jesus. And so I ask you, do you trust in his promises? Now, what if the circumstances in your life tell you otherwise? What if every cell in your body, every ounce of your intelligence, every single thought that has gone through your head in this life tells you that this resurrection could not be true, that it couldn't have happened the way the angel said it did? What if you lose everything? Do you trust this Jesus? Do you still live in hope? It's scary, isn't it? But that's exactly why Jesus went to the grave. I mean, what is possibly scarier than death? What is more ominous and unknown and frightening and final than the tomb? Now, this is why Jesus went to the cross. Your heavenly Father sent his beloved son, Jesus, as the perfect act of love. He sent Jesus into our human condition. Even more than that, Jesus came here to become a friend of sinners. Jesus loved the unlovable. He forgave the unforgivable. Mary Magdalene, whose complete lack of chastity made her damaged goods to the world. She was unlovable to the world. But Jesus loved her as a beloved daughter. Peter, who denied even knowing who Jesus was in front of others. Not once, not twice, but three different times. Jesus personally sought out and forgave him. The very soldiers who nailed Jesus to the cross, he spoke, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes, we killed God. Yet God still loved us. We nailed God to a cross, and yet he returned in forgiving love. See, Jesus came to live as one of us, experiencing all, of our, all, all the wages of our sin, which is death, which is God-forsakenness. And Jesus does this in the most dramatic way possible. Uh, as St. Paul says, he, become, he became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Jesus went to the furthest reaches of God-forsakenness, he entered the worst of our fears in order to bring the light of God's love even there so that the divine light might shine everywhere. Is your sin a place where God is not? No, because Jesus became sin on the cross. Is suffering a place where God is not? No, because the divine light suffered terribly. Is death a place where God is not? No, because Jesus brought the light even there even to the tomb. Jesus took this journey in order to bring all into light all the worst of our human condition, to remove the darkness from even the most fearful of places. I'd like you to look at the painting one last time. And finally, I'd like you to focus on Jesus. See him there up above. See the light that shines out from all around him. Look how he stands over the empty tomb. Look at his victory. You see, God invaded our world. He came into our place of sin where we turned away from God. He invaded death, the most feared thing of all. And he shines his divine light on that. There is no place where we can escape it. No place where the light does not reach. No place, not sin, not death, not suffering, over which God is not victorious. There is no place left for fear. So I ask again, do you trust? Will Easter happen to you? What if you go to the tomb? Will he be there? What if you suffer? What if you lose it all? Is the light of Christ still present? Will you still live in hope? 
Well, the message of Easter is that in Christ, it is a resounding yes. Amen. Now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now continue our worship with the prayers of the church that we bring before our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the dawn of the new day. Praise be to God. Lord, we praise you for your death and your resurrection. You have surely conquered night and reign in everlasting light. Praise be to God. Lord, we acknowledge this morning that you made all things, that you sent your Son to redeem our creation, and that the Holy Spirit has now come to restore what was once lost through our sin. Praise be to God. Lord, because Jesus is risen from the dead, the day will come when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Help us to live in that truth. Lord, give us joyful hearts this day to rejoice with little children, with those who have been touched with powerful and effective healing from the prayers of your people, and with all the redeemed. Lord, we do not want to live as those who are without hope. May your word and promise strengthen our faith in the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We pray for those in need of healing from illnesses, those whose eyes need to be dried from the tears of their mourning, and for the hope of the hopeless. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, strengthen our resolve to share your light of the gospel to every land, everywhere. Help us to be shining lights to all the world. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Now let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Now receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We're happy that you joined us for worship today. Reverend Tews is the pastor of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Gettysburg, South Dakota, Christ Lutheran Church in Lebanon, South Dakota, and St. Paul Lutheran Church in Seneca, South Dakota. Saturday evening worship is held at 4.30 p.m. at St. Paul, 6 p.m. at Christ Lutheran, with Sunday morning worship at 9.30 a.m. at Emmanuel. <laughs>
I'm Pastor Dale Satgast, the president of the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and also one of the preachers for Main Street Living. I hope that you enjoy this wonderful television ministry as we bring God's living word to you. It's our sincere prayer that through God's word, his spirit is working so that many people may know God's forgiving and saving love through the message of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross, his resurrection, and the promise of his presence with us always. There are many volunteers who give of their time and energy so that this program may be broadcast. All of the pastors volunteer their time. But there are also costs to produce and purchase airtime to broadcast this program. It is only through the generous gifts of our viewers that we can continue this ministry. If you enjoy Main Street Living and wish to help us keep it on the air, we ask that you pray for us and that you help us with your generous donations. You may send your donations to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. Again, Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. God bless you in your walk of faith. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information on an LCMS church in your town, please contact the district office at 3501 Gateway Boulevard, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57106, or log on to www.lcms.org. If this program has been a blessing to you, please send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. We appreciate your prayers and support of this ministry. Through your continued support, we can spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Main Street Living is a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and is supported by member churches and viewers like you. Created and produced by many people interested in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Zion, no master comes to you.